Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q. In this video, I'm going to discuss how the XP-67 Moonbat has, potentially, been unleashed by the nerfs to the P-61. Hello there, and here on the tarmac outside my hangar is the XP-67 Moonbat, a plane I did a full review on in December 2023, when it was released into the game, but given the recent changes to the P61, that is in January 2024, I believe could benefit from a reassessment. If you want to know about the nurse to the P61, please see my preceding video where I go into them in detail. Suffice to say here, the P61 can no longer occupy the same space as light fighters and no longer crowd them out. I'm also seeing some other effects, such as the slow return of the B-29C Super Fortress and a vast reduction in the number of P-61s being flown. But what I want to talk about here is the effect on one particular aircraft, the Moonbat. Here we have a spreadsheet showing the statistics for all of the Tier 8 fighters, and this was on display in my December 2023 review of the Moonbat. The Moonbat is in column C and D, and nothing has changed. These statistics are the same now as they were then. What has changed is the landscape of threats. My thoughts were strongly shaped by the threat that was the P-61 in December. Of course, no more. Let me illustrate why quickly. The Moonbat has a manoeuvrability rating of 56. Prior to the nerf, the P61 had a rating of 53. If built for manoeuvrability, it would be a seriously competitive aircraft. It would be difficult to outmaneuver in a Moonbat. And the chances were, since you were likely to encounter it in a furball, you would be shot down by an enemy aircraft, even if you were able to outmaneuver the P61. You just would not be able to shoot it down quickly enough. No more. The manoeuvrability of the Moonbat is now rated at 45. You can easily outmaneuver it in a Moonbat built for manoeuvrability and shoot it down much more quickly and probably survive even in a furball. But in truth, the P61 has not quite disappeared from the game, but is now present in far fewer numbers than it was before. And your threats are no longer this plane. They are other fighters such as the P80A. The Pogo potentially is a good competitor for the Moon Battle, though you don't see many of these. So is the P-51H and so is the I-250, but again, these aircraft are reasonably rare. The chances are that in your Moonbat, if you choose a manoeuvrability build, you will probably be facing orders of battle that are favourable to you. Here's a spreadsheet showing the effects of two builds on the base figures of the Moonbat, and those are visible in columns C and D. The first of the builds is in columns E and F. The difference between this build and the base figures is expressed in absolute terms in column G and in percentage terms in column H. And this build is a high energy build. The equipment here is a gun sight, polished skin, high speed gas turbine, uprated engine and gas operated action. All of these are ultimate level equipment and calibrated to 478. The pilot has battle tested, aerobatics expert, aerodynamics expert, engine guru one and engine guru two, marksman one and cruise flight, not a 15 points uh, skilled pilot. So you could squeeze more out of here. The reason why this build is in first position on this spreadsheet is because in December 2023, I felt that this was the most viable build for the moon bat. I didn't feel it was worth trying to build it to compete with the P61 directly. It was better off going away and doing other things, fighting like a P51, that is vertically, up and down, trying to find isolated targets, destroying them with the guns, and if failing to do that, getting away with the speed accrued from the dive. Had to be careful about anywhere the P61 was. You could kill it, of course, with the firepower, but probably only when it was busy and heavily damaged at the time. Now, this build will work better because the P61 is not a factor in your considerations and you will have more opportunities to employ the, the techniques of high energy fighting in each battle without worrying about the P61 simply going away and winning the battle whilst you're trying to find something to do. So if you are good at high energy fighting, there is no need to swap away from your variant of this build. However, the next build in columns I and J is a maneuverability build. And the difference between these and the base figures is expressed in column K, absolute terms, 
and then column L in percentage terms. And the equipment here is again a gun sight, a lightweight wing frame, lightweight power unit, an operated engine. That's my preference to keep the aircraft generally fast as opposed to try and make it quicker under boost. The boost maximum speed is fairly weak for this plane. However, it is an alternative that you might consider and gas operated action. And the pilot here, if you're going to go for a maneuverability build, and if you have her, I strongly recommend you use Elise Clark because she has a special maneuver expert skill that will apply. And additionally, in this case, aerobatics expert, aerodynamics expert, engine guru one and marksman one. Again, not fully trained. You could squeeze a little bit more out of Elise here if you got her to 15 points. Previously, my feeling is that this wasn't a suitable build for the moon bat. It just wasn't good enough to be able to knock the P-61 out of the sky quickly and would get destroyed if you tried to play it as a pretty manoeuvrable fighter. This is no longer the case. This is now a strongly viable build. And in fact, given my skill set, this is probably the build that I would edge towards in the moon bat now and away from the high energy build. How I wish we had the option on studying the order of battle at the beginning of a battle to be able to swap between alternative builds as you can in World of Tanks. But the news here is that previously I would have strongly recommended that you go for the high energy build. Now I can say that it is a matter of choice and probably I will be edging towards that maneuverability build. And what you're going to see next is a, a battle with the Moonbat using this maneuverability build. The map for the forthcoming battle is Northern Bridgehead. It's the Birds of Prey variant with five sectors laid out in a very squashed five spots of the die configuration. And what we have in the center is a central repair base. You can get repairs here if your team owns this base. You can swap to another aircraft of the same tier if you feel your current one is not suitable for the battle. You can also spawn here, which means that all the other sectors are within easy reach when you spawn in. On one axis around this airbase, there are two mining plants, one near each spawn. These are strategically important, possibly not initially at the start of the battle in a fighter, although one has to bear in mind that it's a good idea to try and take out any enemy bombers that might be coming for your mining plant rather than heading towards their own at the start of the game. And then on the other axis, we have a pair of makeway garrisons. If we look at the order of battle, we can see that I'm top tier, I have an ME109TL for company at top tier. We also have an RB17, excellent for capturing the mining plants. And we have a Kostikov 302, which is an interesting aircraft, but we're going to find it a bit difficult in a tier 8 battle. The enemy team has an IL-20. They have a B-29C, so immediately we can see that they're well set up to capture mining plants. They also have a P-80A, and that is a plane I will have to keep my eye on. With my maneuverability build, if this P-80A is built for high energy fighting, I will have the advantage if it chooses to turn with me. If it has a maneuverability build, I will struggle against it. And the only way to find out is to engage it once and judge what it can and can't do. And then they also have a pretty useful Key 93, heavy hitting heavy, even though it's a tier seven. And the RB-17 notwithstanding, and notwithstanding my abilities in the XP-67, at first blush, it looks as if the enemy team has got an advantage here. We start this battle as I'm already on the way to the central repair base to try and secure this for my team. And we'll have to keep an eye on the developments regarding the two mining plants throughout the game, as well as that P-80A. Quick check on the gun range, which is 2300 feet. Sizing up the threats. And here comes the first one of them, dealing with the fighter. The Zvilling appears in a convenient position for me to shoot. Easily destroy this tier 7 heavy. And of course, I'm in a position to dogfight here because I have the maneuverability build. Get onto the P-51 and we sight the P-80A for the first time. He's busy, he hasn't realised I'm around. I very quickly shoot him and destroy him. Find the key 93. We've already got the central repair base, but we're two sectors to one down. I want to clear out the threats here before I consider anything else.
dispose of the Focke Wolf 190. Thinking about going towards our plant, but we take it, and that allows me to concentrate on the Tempest instead. Don't quite finish him off, but I can see there are threats coming towards me, which include the PATA, so I concentrate on that and let the Tempest go. PATA again ignores me, however the bot Corsair does not, so I have to leave the PATA for a moment to shoot that. The PATA is after an air defence aircraft, and although I don't get the kill, I do most of the damage to him, and he's removed again. We've nearly lost this airbase, air though, so I'm fighting hard to try and keep it. But we lose it before I can destroy the Corsair, and I've been set on fire, probably by the Key 93. Assist in the destruction of that. Turn to try and f locate the fighter that's shooting at me. It's the P-51. Nominally more manoeuvrable, however as a bot I can pretty much rely on my ability to outturn it. The P-80A has spawned here and got shot down. However, as fast as I'm killing aircraft, we are my team is dying here. I'm not able to secure this base yet. I have to put the engine back in. Try and take out the multi-roll. Just fail. Have to break off. Find another target. And the air defense aircraft. And finally one of the bots on the enemy team shoots me down. There were just too many aircraft there and it's finally balanced this game. Having failed to take the airfield I have no choice but to spawn at the original spawn point and I'm immediately in trouble if I don't deal with the threats that are approaching our spawn point which includes the PATA. Fortunately he was busy shooting at something else. He takes a lot of damage from me and here's where we prove that I can outturn him. He must have a speed build on that or he's not that good at turning. My maneuverability, maneuverability build allows me to dispose of him very easily. Now, I would have gone to the mining plant had I had the chance, although I probably would have been too late. Now it is definitely too late, so I have to think about what we're going to do to try and win this battle as we're four sectors to one down. So I dispose of the Corsair. And I decide to try and take an outlying sector before I go uh, into the airfield in case, as happened last time, there are so many airplanes in the airfield, I can't actually make a difference. Key 93 tries to get on my tail. I saw him coming. Now he's trying to get away. He can't do that either. I shoot him down, but what he has done effectively is kite me out of the sector. Quick winged legend there. The first sortie was 10,000 personal points, so it was an effective first sortie. And I decide that if I shoot this multi-roll down over the plant, it's going to help my team capture it. So we go after the Fokker Wolf. Critical hit, which is the wing, making it even less manoeuvrable, and now it's an e easy kill. And that's more points towards the capture of this plant, and I can only hope my team managed to do it. The bomber is over here, otherwise we're going to lose this battle. Now it's back to this garrison to see if we can take it. We've just taken the other plant, so there's hope. And all I can see are ADAs here, so it should be relatively easy to knock those over. of a ram kill there. I could have done without losing that health really. And now the other ADAs are a long way away from me. I'm even thinking about going to get repairs at the airbase which we have taken subsequently. And then I realise I, that I can make the difference here. We take the other plant finally, the one that I assisted with, and now my team take this garrison as well. It looks like we're going to lose the centre before I can get repairs. That's a little bit of a nuisance. We've managed to res uh, get on to a position where we could still conceivably win this battle, although we now have lost the central repair base. Spot the PATA and I prioritise him as a target, ignoring the bot Tempest off to the right. Even though he's being shot, he ignores that, trying to shoot down the ground attacker. Makes him an easy kill for me. By the time he decides that he is going to try and avoid being shot, it's too late. 
shoot down the Corsair. The ADAs spawn. I'm going to try and get rid of them as quickly as possible. Ideally, I'd like to get rid of four of these before the PADA spawns back in. But even with this firepower, that's going to be a tall order. To avoid that ADA. Considering going after the heavy. Now the PATA has spawned back in. But fortunately for me, in a disadvantageous position for him. He has to turn towards me. And then I find that he hasn't turned particularly well for the second time this game. And it's an easy kill. The ace goes through. Still struggling to take this, but we need to. We need to, if we can possibly get superiority. We've just taken one of the two sectors we didn't have. I can get this one. We might just manage to squeeze a win here. Of course, I killed the PATA after the squad line, so he's not coming back. And there we go. We get superiority with the enemy team on 790 points. And we pull out an unlikely victory. 21,000 and a half personal points, an ace, and this was only one of several very good battles I had in the XP67 with this configuration. There you have it, the XP67 Moonbat reassessed. And the disappearance of the P-61 as a threat to light fighters means that this aircraft can emerge from its shadow and now become a powerful force in the game, either with a high energy build or a maneuverability build. Well, I hope you found that interesting and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Cube signing out.